Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It has been cool and unsettled across the country during the last week and in places where really have been some torrential downpours with hail and thunder mixed in as well. Now, is there any sign of a change as we head through the next 14 days? Well, I think the answer to that is yes, but to begin with, in the short term, it's cool and showery. We have areas of low pressure close to the UK. Now, as we head through the middle and second half of the week, what we see is a deep area of low pressure pushing in from the Atlantic. This is at 21 GMT on Thursday, the 20th of May. There's some uncertainty about the exact timing, but the general picture is pretty likely to be accurate now. And you can see more persistent outbreaks of rain making their way eastwards or northeastwards across the UK. And there is the likelihood of very windy conditions on the southern flank of this area of low pressure. It could be gales for a time. I'll look at that in a little bit more detail later on. Now, once that clears, it's then showery again through the weekend. There could be longer spells of rain, another batch of wet weather moving in from the Atlantic. And as that moves away early next week, it's back to the showery theme. There is a change possibly beginning to show its hand here, which is uh, Tuesday the 25th of May. If we look up to the northwest there, we can see this area of high pressure building. And although the UK is still under a cool northerly flow with showers, this is indicating the possibility of things beginning to change. I'll look at that as well in a little bit more detail shortly. Take a quick look at the jet stream profile to start off with. It's well to the south of the UK here. You can see it's, uh, it's, it's going through uh, central France. So we're on its cool northern side, as is much of uh, western northern Europe. So disappointing temperatures as a result. If we jump forward to the 22nd of May, not a great deal has changed. And then if we move forward to the 25th, there are signs again of things beginning to shift a little. You see to the west here, high pressure's building northwards and the jet stream there's buckling. The UK at this point still remains on its cool side, but the potential for things to change. In terms of the air mass profile, this is at uh, 20, uh, 25th of May. On this particular type of plot, blues are used to indicate air mass temperatures at or below 0 Celsius, with yellows and browns consequently above. So you can see most of the UK there's at or below 0 Celsius and even, even in the south there, air mass temperatures are disappointing for the time of the year. These are about 1500 metres above sea level. What they translate to down at the surface is something like this. What you can see is in southern parts of Britain, 14, 15, 16, maybe 17 Celsius. As you head north, temperatures are a little bit lower, but all in all disappointing and pretty disappointing right the way across Western and Northern Europe. There is also the possibility for some cold nights. I'm just using this particular chart to illustrate the temperatures we could be seeing. But it will be dependent upon cloud cover and wind strengths, but this one is for uh, Monday the 24th of May, showing minimums. You can see there in the north, temperatures down to one or two Celsius quite widely, if it's correct, somewhat higher further south. Nonetheless, there is that potential there and for ground frost to be quite widespread, particularly in the northern half of the UK. So farmers and growers still need to keep an eye out. I said I'd come back to wind strengths. This associated with that area of low pressure moving in later during the first week of the forecast period. This is at uh, 18 GMT on Thursday the 20th. We can see them gusts of 40, 50 miles per hour off the Welsh coast here and down to the southwest of, of England. Now that area of strong winds will be moving across the, uh, across the mainland and we can see here at uh, 12 GMT on Friday, gusts even in inland areas are shown at over 40 miles an hour. So it is, it is particularly windy for the time of year, but could be some disruption there. The trees are fully leafed now, so that makes things worse, of course. Certainly something to look out for. In terms of rainfall, well, there has been rain in, in virtually the whole of the UK recently. And as we go through the next 10 days, that general theme continues. The 
chart on the left is aggregated for the first five days and what we can see is the wettest conditions are forecast to be in the north and the west with totals of around up to about 60 millimetres in places. Not so much rain in the south and the east but nonetheless still appreciable quantities. On the right we've got days 0 to 10. Again it's aggregating the rainfall throughout that period and what we can see again is northern and western parts have the wettest conditions with, uh, with totals of over 80 millimetres locally over southeast, 20 to 30, perhaps 40 millimetres being closer to the mark. These are pretty broad brush uh, charts. They're just a snapshot from the latest GFSO. They, they may well vary quite a lot, but they do give an indication of the rainfall profile that is looking likely because there is, there is quite a lot of consistency in the computer models for how the general pattern will develop within the next week to 10 days. Which brings me on to the other deterministics at 10 days, just to see if there is a sign of things beginning to change. This is ECM at uh, Friday the 28th of May. Big change here. What we can see is high pressure has built in from the west. It's becoming more and more settled across the country. Because the orientation of that high pressure weight's built in, the air mass under it's not particularly warm, but a much more settled picture. Look at the Canadian model at the same time. Once again, it's high pressure dominated. The UK is there, right under the center of it. Now, the GFS, which the initial animation was based on, but the animation only went out to seven days ahead. This is what it's shown at 10 days ahead. Again, it's a high pressure dominated scene. Could still be the potential for more showery conditions in southeast and England. It just really depends on how far eastwards that high pressure will build. All in all though, a big change if these deterministic models are correct. So do the ensembles support what they show? Well, here's the 16 day plot for London. The air mass profiles along the top here. The thick black line shows a 30 year average. In the short term, each, most of the runs, each one is represented by, by one of the colored lines is below that 30 year average. So it's, it's a chilly pitch for the time of the year. By the time we get to about the 27th, there's a big spread appearance. Some are going for warmer air aloft and some keeping things pretty cool. All in all, it's closer to average. I would probably describe that saying that there's a, there's, there's a trend there for temperatures to return close to the average later on in the uh, 16 day period. Perhaps more interestingly though in this instance is to look at the rainfall forecasts which are along the bottom. So in the short term we see an ongoing risk of rain but then from about the 25th to 26th of May there are fewer spikes appearing there. It's a drier picture. That of course suggests that high pressure will be having more influence. Now if we jump up to the northwest to Belfast it's quite a similar profile in terms of the air mass. Um, in terms of rainfall across the bottom there, we see it's wet to begin with, but by about the 27th, there's a signal for it also to become drier with fewer spikes appearing there, rain spikes. Perhaps towards the end, as we head into the early part of June, there's just a sign there of rain beginning to return. Maybe high pressure would be declining as we head into June and the start of the summer. Well, here is the 16 day data table showing uh, pressure trends. It's for York, it's what I usually pick because it's reasonably central and it gives an idea of what's likely to be taking place across the UK as a whole. In the short term, we see yellows and greens and then blues and greens in these columns. Each column represents the summary for one day um, and the different colors used to indicate the runs which are showing different uh, pressure forecasts. Greens and blues indicating low pressure, purple at there, just a small number, very low pressure, with yellows and oranges indicating higher pressure. So we see in the short term, it's a mixed picture of them. We've got that area of low pressure pushing in from the Atlantic during Thursday, Friday. But as we head forwards from about the 25th, the 26th of May onwards, the amount of orange in these columns increases. It reaches a peak at about the 27th, so I suggest that high pressure is really going to become a key player there. Unfortunately, later on, there is a sign of 
high pressure declining, you see the amount of orange in those columns begins to reduce again. So, as I say, perhaps some uncertainty as we head into the beginning of June. Another uh, way of looking at pressure patterns is to see the 500 HPA height anomaly chart. It's, it, it's not, strictly speaking, it's not showing uh, surface pressure at all, but there is a close relationship uh, between 500 HPA heights and surface pressure. What we see here is, as I say, it's for days 10 to 15, there's a strong positive anomaly to the west of the UK. It really is particularly strong at the moment, being shown for this, this length of time. Uh, this far forwards. As we head into Scandinavia, there's a weak negative anomaly. Taking that, those things into, uh, combine those two factors, suggests that high pressure is going to be building in from the west of the UK. So that's from, from, from the west, uh, eastwards across the UK. So it's really in keeping with what those, uh, the other ensemble data was showing and the deterministic model output was going for as well. Hence, probably more settled, more high pressure orientated weather. Because it's building in from the west, as I mentioned, temperatures won't be fantastic. This shows um, anomal temp two meter temperature anomalies for days 10 to 15. The blues over the UK are indicating below average temperatures relative to the 30 year norm. Remember though, this shows days and nights, so it's possible that under high pressure we could be getting some chilly nights, clear skies. The days, nonetheless, could be relatively warm compared to the average, even though the air mass isn't looking particularly, uh, particularly warm for the time of the year. The sun is very, very strong. Of course, we're rapidly approaching the, uh, the longest day. So even with a rather chilly air mass aloft, if the sun is shining, it's going to rapidly warm up at the surface. So we could be seeing here the possibility of the chilly nights to a certain extent offsetting the warmer days. I think it's not looking particularly warm during the days for, for the time of year, but it could be pleasantly warm. Here's another way of looking at the two meter temperatures. It's the postage stamp plot. Each, each one of these stamps shows the forecast output from one of the runs in the ensemble model. It's for the 1st of June, showing, uh, showing maximum forecast temperatures. It's really the oranges and reds which are indicating very warm conditions, and with yellows going up to about 20, 21 Celsius. Therefore, there's, there's not really much sign of the oranges and reds. A few of these stamps have them getting into northeastern France, but it's a sm relatively small number, and even those don't have it have that warmth pushing into southeastern England. I think it's 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 suggesting, as I say, that very warm conditions are not looking likely as we head into the start of the summer, at the beginning of June. Nonetheless, temperatures could be approaching 21, 22 Celsius in the south of England if, if, uh, if high pressure does become dominant. So pleasantly warm rather than very warm. Therefore, to summarize the next 14 days, week one, it's unsettled with showers or longer spells of rain, and there is a likelihood of it turning very windy for a time, particularly in the south and west. Days are likely to be cool overall, but in sunny spells, temperatures will be close to the average. We can expect some cold nights, and there is still a risk of frost, particularly in the north. Week two begins cool and showery, but high pressure probably then builds in from the west, turning it drier and more settled. That leads to chilly nights, but daytime temperatures should be recovering, and in sunny spells, it will feel pleasantly warm. So that's the summary. It looks like at last there's a significant change on the way towards more settled conditions. Probably not very warm, but with a strong sun, late May, early June, it should feel warm enough nonetheless during the days if the cloud holds back, of course. And that really will depend a lot on where high pressure becomes centered. So thank you for watching this. If you found it useful and enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like buttons and subscribe to the channel. Thanks now. Bye.